through. So um, yeah, feel free to uh, feel free to get involved and ask questions. Um, so for those of you that don't uh, know Transparity, just a little bit about us. Um, we are a pure play Microsoft cloud partner. Um, by that, we don't uh, we don't kind of have any on-premise infrastructure and if we're in data centers, we are solely focused on delivering um, technical solutions in cloud and on Microsoft technology. Um, and uh, and kind of testimony to that fact is that we currently hold um, six of the partner designations there. Um, partner desi designations are the new way in which Microsoft recognizes partners, which is far more based around um, the work we've done, referenceable case studies, um, and the skills we hold as opposed just to um, uh, volume of revenue or licenses sold. So it really is kind of um, testament to the fact that, um, you know, we are highly specialized on Microsoft and it is what we do. Um, uh, I still think we are the most um, accredited UK only partner for Microsoft. So um, yeah, we still hold that, uh, that flag. Um, I think that's it from me. Um, any kind of questions, I'll pass over to uh, Ehab to kind of run through the agenda and um, and yeah, still here at the end. Lovely, thank you, thank you, Adam. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Good to have you here with us and happy to see some familiar names that we've done projects with in the past. Uh, that's really good to see. So I'll walk you through the agenda quickly and then get into the uh, webinar. So we will start, so the conversation is about unstructured data, the impact of that on your business productivity, compliance, governance, and ease of use, and making life easy for the users in general. And also there is that little new thing called Copilot and AI you might have heard of, um, how the quality of your data will impact taking advantage of Copilot and AI to get return on your investment and use it for the best way possible. So I'll start the conversation with the challenges that you would have with unstructured data, the user behavior and resistance to change, which is, believe it or not, is one of the biggest challenges you will deal with when you go through a digital transformation endeavor. It's it's people think the difficulty is is uh, technology, not necessarily. Sometimes the users and getting them on board and help them with adoption is one of the biggest challenges. Um, we'll talk about the inconsistent architecture issues that you uh, may run into, the role of leadership in such uh, change the tactics you can follow with data management and the growing data divide. We will talk a little bit also about metadata searchability and being AI ready. And then we will finish off with summary and questions and answers. So one issue that you would run into when you have your data not structured and architected in a way that meets what you need is also the scalability and growth. And things in no time can spiral out of control. So you start, I have my new environment, excited about it, let's collaborate, let's use MS Teams, let's use SharePoint Online. And in no time, you will find the structure that you put in place really, one, doesn't exactly meet what you need as a business, may not follow your compliance and governance policies, both on a wider uh, perspective on organization level, but also maybe legal implications in the market you operate from. Uh, your data usage will uh, spike up. You will run into permissions issues. And by the time you get into a place where actually we would like to automate things, we would like to have external uh, collaboration on certain aspects and subsets of this data, you will find that you are not in a position to do that and you need to reverse engineer what you have to be in a position where you could utilize automation, AI, which we will talk about, uh, external sharing, and maybe cross-departmental work as well. And the deeper you are in your use with unstructured data, 
the harder it will be and more um, effort intensive for you to bring that back to be in a in a good position again it's possible we do that all the time and help our clients with it as well but it's always good to have that understanding as you start your journey other aspect as well is the variety and complexity of the data that you have so typically as any business uh, you would have different types of data so the data that i deal with uh, within the practice is different to the sales data that Adam deals with. It's different to the marketing data that Natalie needs. Um, so that that varies from the different file types, but also the categories, the organization of that data. So it's not a solution that fits all. So if you think about it, you have your wider global business need that everyone needs to follow and adhere to, but also you have specific needs, specific niches within the business for different functions, different project types, different departments that all need to be addressed in the way you structure your data. And you also have the search and retrieval. The quality of search and the retrieval of the data depends heavily on how you set up your data, the type of information you put around your files, the permissions as well. This is very important, especially uh, when it comes to AI. Um, anything will be exposed and returned to the user. So if you have any flaws with the way you set up your permissions, data will surface and be returned to your uh, users out of the data as well so it's not only about permissions it's about the quality and the quality of the data um, you may have policies that you don't uh, follow um, they're no longer valid but then you go and you speak to copilot i would like to start a new project or we have a client on boarding w what are the practices that we need to follow you may get some steps and details that are really was viable three years ago but not anymore also security and compli compliance um the the way you t you categorize your information would be of a huge help when it comes to following compliance policies setting up retention rules that apply on specific types of data so with the typical use of data management, whether within Teams, SharePoint, etc., you have your permissions that you could set up, which is all good. But then you have that extra step where you would like to have specific compliance, specific retention, maybe archiving exercises. When your data is structured in the right way and everything follows a pattern of, of categories, then pushing these policies, pushing these labels will be an easy uh, task uh, for you uh, to do. And you may reach a, a stage of matur maturity within your environment, within your data management and business. Well, actually, you know what? And especially with AI, this is really important as well. Um, we would like to understand the patterns we have. We would like to understand where we do good. We would like to understand where we can improve and now for example with sharepoint premium uh, from an it perspective you have a wealth of tools uh, that are becoming that are being uh, launched and rolled out to tenants so sharepoint premium is kind of a top add-on to the typical SharePoint that I use, you are used to. It utilizes AI. Uh, it's got its own pay-as-you-go and licensing models. It would allow you to run reports, analysis to a high detail uh, that was never possible uh, before. So all of that would help you uh, to understand what you have um, where you can improve and where you need to get to. So before we get into the aspects about the data specifics, and I'm not going to cover two technical things, but let's just start with the user behavior and resistance to change. And this is what, the, from my perspective, and I'm sure my colleagues in the same field would agree, and also from your side, if you are leading a project, probably you will find this the biggest obstacle that you would run to. Um, 
we are happy with our file servers. It's working for us. We know where our files are. Why do we have to change? This is making things difficult. And this is normal. It's, it's, it, it's a, a human behavior we are all used to uh, because we feel comfortable with what we know. Change doesn't bring uncertainty. And this is where it becomes a balance between winning your users over and your need also as a business to add efficiencies and make sure that you're not falling behind uh, and uh, you are productive with the things that you are paying for. In many cases we run into, you find the client, the organization is actually paying the license. So the pay aspect is done. They are paying because they need certain aspects of it, but they're not taking full advantage of what they're paying for because of that disconnect between the strategy, the the business um, change, and uh, the the user. One of the reasons that's the case, users don't have full understanding of how this will impact them in a positive way, and that's where conversations need to take a place, uh, demos, training communications and if you are really uh, looking to engage them and add incentives for them as well for people who get involved in pilots uh, a proof of uh, concepts uh, from department perspective of individuals um, you could add incentives to that so people can engage and 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 see um, the benefits of that so we've done projects in the past actually you know what it's not a big bang let's work with a, a subset group of users or a department who are engaged, who are forward thinking, who would like to see things improved. And then they could be your ambassadors within the business. You could do a demo on actual work you have within uh, your business, your organization, use your business language, your organization terms, and colleagues would be explaining to colleagues the benefits um, of that. We find a lot of positive feedback when you have users helping with this. Uh, so that kind of fall between the expert and the user base will kind of not be there and they'll be more receptive um, to get that feedback from their peers. And this is where the leadership's role is very important. Uh, and by leadership, I mean both from perspective of the business. So you have the backing of your management and executives, but also uh, leadership from the project perspective as well. You may have to have some uncomfortable conversations, challenging conversations, which is healthy, which is fine. Uh, no, no, no problem with that whatsoever. But the, the, the challenge you would have is to be given up on, on the change that you need as an organization and as a business because of the pushback you get from a certain group of users who are set and comfortable where they are. Um, we've seen it happen. And sometimes you would run into issues because you didn't have the conversations early on to ensure the importance. Sometimes you, you run into governance, compliance issues, simply because you don't have the right policies and the right taken place to prote protect your business. Um, so it's very important to understand it's actually not only about efficiencies, it's not only about the productivity, but also there are obligations as a business where you need to add these controls in place uh, at the right time before you may run into issues. So what are the issues that users typically uh, run into when you have inconsistent architecture? And by inconsistent architecture is, I'm talking about your environment reflecting the behavior, the setup you had for many years uh, through your file servers. So people have their folders, they organize things as they wish, it makes sense to them. However, as a bigger picture, that doesn't make sense for you as a business. You may have the same function, the same need, done in many different ways because that makes sense uh, for the user. So you don't have a unified way of, of doing the same thing. 
And one of the biggest issues you, you would run to as a business is the knowledge loss. So what happens when people start changing roles, they go into another business, they've been with, with you for many years, they know everything inside out, they're good at their job, uh, they're on top of that management, but when they leave, that knowledge is left with them. Imagine if you had your processes in place as a business, you understand them, everyone understand them. When you have new people on board, onboarding with you, people changing roles, the uh, adoption into the new setup will be quite straightforward forward because you understand uh, what you have. And the other issue you would have also with retrieving information and the quality of the information you get back through, uh, through your uh, searches, uh, through your uh, calls uh, to the data you have, because simply things don't talk to each other and they are set up uh, in different ways. And this is where your solution need to be following the standard uh, protocols. You would need to have your documentation in place as well and utilize the technology you have, the technology that your license is already paying for. So things in SharePoint Online, for example, versioning, um, there is no need for your users to be saving the same file two, three, four times. Believe me, we've seen it. We see it all the time. Uh, file name, V1. File name, V2. But if you, the technology is there for you. You don't need to do that. You have version and controls, for example, uh, within SharePoint. You don't need to email things all over the place. You could work on the same document at the same time, given the, the correct permissions is set up and the correct template and you follow uh, uh, fits uh, the uh, purpose. So the tactics that you need to consider around your data management it starts with the soft things, the policies. What do we need? How to do it? How we do it? How do we enforce it? Can we enforce it? And remember, when it comes to policies and compliance, th there are two aspects. There are things that we could enfor enforce and build and implement it through technology that's available for us. But also there are things that are done from the business side as well. For example, the business terms that you, you follow, do we refer to uh, organizations we work with as clients, as customers? as partners. So that clarity with the way you deal with information as a business need to be understood, communicated, and when you see things are not done properly, it needs to be resolved and raised uh, amongst uh, your teams. So things are from what goes inside the document, the templates that you need to follow. So for example, here at Transparency, when we have a new client onboarded or we have a new statement of work that we need to do, a proposal, there is a process that we follow, templates that we follow. So everyone involved knows exactly uh, what needs to be done. And this is where training is very important. And I see my colleagues also on the call from uh, the adopt adoption and change it's important to be able to communicate that to the users in a language that's easy for them, um, showing them examples, uh, being up to date with the things that they need. And this is the training aspect is a much wider conversation. I'll just highlight one thing. Um, organizations tend to put the training and adoption up front, which is good, but it's an ongoing process. You have a new technology that comes in all the time, and new ways of doing things. How do we ensure our users and our um, employees are up to date and utilizing what's made available to them? And also you have onboarding as well. You have new employees joining your organization. How do we ensure that the, that knowledge is available for them, that training is available for them so they can onboard and follow your uh, best practices uh, effectively? And again, uh, like I mentioned, we have the technology aspect that we can, we can leverage and also we have the business uh, decisions aspect uh, that we can follow as well. So in this example, I'll talk a little bit about the metadata use, for example. And this bit where it's a change to the user behavior with the systems. And file servers, we are used to folders. We love folders, right? 
folder, give it a name, folder inside the folder. And the reason for that, actually, I don't want to deviate from the webinar much, but the way we organize information until currently, until recently, is based on the concepts from librarians. The, in fact, even in universities, the information management taught is based on librarian concepts. And um, it works. It, it did the job for decades. But the thing is, they didn't have the technology back then to help them organize and categorize and present information in a different way like we have uh, today. So metadata, it allows you to tag, categorize your data on a, on a level without you having to repeat yourself, duplicate, and have that need to double click all the time, um, go back and forth, back and forth to do the same thing where you could do it uh, easily from where you are within your document management uh, place. Uh, so it helps you with search, that it would speed that up for you. You could use filters, automation. And this is where it becomes really powerful. When we have certain values that match a condition that we do, we could set up alerts, we could automate a process, uh, especially even like around figures, around status. So for example, if you have a document that belongs to a project and that document, it's been waiting on a colleague or waiting on a client, it's been like that for three weeks, something needs to happen. If it's done manually, you would depend on your employee to go and remember and follow things up. And these are things that could be business critical. It could determine whether you win an opportunity or not. But if you are following the right setup and you put the right conditions in, oh, hold on a minute. This has been like this for three weeks. Let's make things happen. So the right people would be alerted and, and reminded to take actions. So this kind of a structure, even though we may think about it from uh, document management, we may think about it about productivity, ease of use, uh, searchability, but also it, it impacts everything else in, in so many different ways. Um, compliance. So if there are values that are tagged to that file, then certain compliance rules needs to be informed. And this is where the technology meets the business language to produce uh, the the governance rules that you follow as a, an organization. So for metadata and such um, terms and modern way of working with information would help you to scale up. Uh, when your business uh, grow, it would give you more tools to manage your data and ensure uh, you follow compliance and governance. So I'll put a little video here. I hope you could see in the screen. Uh, nothing too... All right, let's see. Is it going to play for us? So uh, in this video, really, what we are going to see is uh, an example of what I explained in the previous uh, slide. Uh, let's give Mr. Stream a second. Oh, thank you. That's fantastic. All right. Okay. Technical difficulties, everyone. So uh, in this video, basically what I've showed, I showed an example of a, a typical file structure, folder structure based where the user need to go through a project, need to go through a country, need to go through a function. All the time they are clicking. They are going deeper and deeper into a nested typical architecture. But what happens if I need to find the budget documents for me within a wider market? I would like to see my bu budget documents for the UK, France, Germany at the same time. I would like see the, to see the documents that are assigned to me uh, as, as a user, the things that I'm responsible to. Utilizing metadata and information and tags around the files would allow me to do that from one place and see all that top level view with little clicks. Unfortunately, we have technical difficulties where the video is not loading for us. I'm sure we could share the video with you uh, post the uh, webinar if you're interested to see it in action. So that brings us to the data divide that we have where you have organizations that are adopting 
into the modern way of working with data. They are utilizing technology. It's improving the output, is improving the productivity of their staff. And you have organizations who are falling behind because they're not taking advantage of the things that are available to them. You have bottlenecks. You depend on individuals to do things, uh, to remember things, to put notes, to put reminders while the technology is there for you to give you all these uh, efficiencies and productivity tools that are available as part of the licenses uh, that you have. So you, you as a business, you would have competitive disadvantage because you have your peers in the market, they are, the output is improved because they are doing the right things that are relevant to them. And that's prevalent now with AI as well, uh, which is the next slide. I'll talk about it uh, in more uh, details. Let, let, let's actually jump to that slide about AI. So I don't know if you have been using it uh, personally. So on a personal level, I've used ChatGPT for a long while since it has come out. I use Microsoft Designer uh, for graphics. Things that took probably a week or more, I could do it in a short amount of time. Even things just to help me with the creating ideas. Um, so you have that mental block at the beginning. You could have ideas uh, come your way from these large, large language uh, models uh, for you to start and save time. And Copilot, for example, is something we've been using here at Transparency. I've been using it from an M365 perspective, where it's bringing the business uh, use, the business data into the conversation. And it's fantastic, the things you could see. So if you are writing a report based on different documents, um, you could look them up. OK, I'm writing uh, a new uh, brief, a project brief. Please bring the information from this project outlines from the costings where things are. And all that would be available for me within one document, uh, which is fantastic. Back just before that, I needed to do that manually uh, myself. On, on addition to that, from the document management perspective, I mentioned SharePoint Premium earlier, uh, which is an AI heavy, AI focused uh, feature that's available and being made available for a while. One of the things that are part of it as well, what used to be known as um, Syntex, it's now labeled under SharePoint Premium. And what that does, it goes back to the conversation we had earlier about the structure we follow as an, as an organization. How do we categorize things? Based on the rules and based on the business language, what, what Syntex can do, it can automate the labeling and tagging for us. It could look inside the document. So for example, if you have an invoices template with uh, employee ID, invoice number, etc., etc., it looks that up and make it available for you and tag it as metadata automatically uh, within your documents, where in the past you needed to do that manually. You could train it to pick up certain terms, certain words, uh, and generate things. You could now even, with the new column that they've added or being added, is to write an AI prompt like you would in ChatGPT or Copilot, write, write that prompt, and when you have a new files added, the prompt would be run against the data and generate that information for you. There are, there are a lot of things that you could do utilizing AI, but all of that, good, interesting, exciting, and adds lots of value, but it goes back to the quality of the data you have. How current? The permissions around them, the policies and compliance you put around them, and you have quality data, you have quality output. If you don't have quality data, the output may not be uh, so good it would confuse your users they'll get results that really are not current and uh, up to date uh, so this is uh, me adam um, uh, this is the last slide that i have happy to have conversation answer questions thanks you have i'm just having a look to see if we've got any um 
see if we've got any questions raised yet. Yeah, there's one there. Can Copilot automatically add metadata to all our files? OK, so I think this is the bit uh, where I answer that would be around. OK, so with Copilot, <laughs> there is a new Copilot being launched that's a specific for SharePoint, for example. What that does, it allows you to build models similar to Copilot Studio, where in simple terms you have a chatbot, but that chatbot doesn't go and target the whole wide world. It targets a subset of your data that's available within your SharePoint environment. So you could build things around your HR policies, uh, marketing and branding image. So you could have tailored and targeted co-pilots based on your data. When it comes to the metadata aspect, this is where SharePoint Premium and Syntax is utilized to do that. So it's still the same technology, it's still AI, uh, it's still using the same things in the back end, but the engine that does it for you would be Syntax. SharePoint Premium, correcting myself. Thanks, you have. Um, any other questions anyone wants to... Uh... And I'll either speak up and raise or by all means type in the chat there. And um, whilst we've got Ehab, it's kind of yeah, great to pick his brains. Brain. I can never I can never stop talking about these things. So. <laughs> there we go. We've got that one popped up. It's in the chat as opposed to the QA. Can you see that Ehab? Do you want me to read it out? Uh is it in the chat? Yes, it is. Because of policy, we only migrated 10 years worth of data into SharePoint online. This obviously gives us a problem uh, over the data um, that is still sat on prem. What approach have other orgs taken? So where only part of the data has been migrated either due okay. to volume, time, compliance. So th this particular question would fall more with my colleagues in the compliance and security team. This is the thing that they do day in, day out. Um, typically from a SharePoint side where I do um, my things in our practice, we run reports, we run discovery, get this information like you mentioned, you seem to have uh, that knowledge available uh, to you and either automate the, moval, uh, the removal of the data from your environment into SharePoint and do the policies there. The, the question that you're asking me here, it seems more about the archiving uh, process and there is a whole conversation around archiving. What we talked about today does relate because you have t a timeline around the documents. So you have timeline around the creation of the document and you also have a timeline around the modification of that document the policies uh, and compliance rules that you would build on your m365 could utilize these and make archiving and processing decision uh, based on that but i think if this is something you would like to explore in detail adam this is something we could loop in our security and compliance team to help I'm I'm also one I I don't know, but um John, thumbs up, thumbs down, add some um kind of clarification. But I'm wondering if there's also a question around, you know, if you want to start doing more things with AI and copilot, is it that you've got data spread across um, you know, different platforms and potentially not? Yeah, I think that's that it's more that angle, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So so from a copilot perspective, you need to utilize your architecture. Think about your permissions. This is very important. And you could scope your search as well. So like I've mentioned about the copilot for SharePoint and OneDrive, for example. So you could build smaller models, target exact data subsets to get information based on your data selection. Um, there are also, if your data is within SharePoint, uh, you could also do something that's called uh, scoped or limited scope search within SharePoint as well to target. So if you wanted to build a wider uh, set of data to be included in your co-pilot scope, you could limit the way 
SharePoint searches and looks for the data and exclude certain sites or certain libraries not to be included in that. So, so there are different ways of doing it, but it's possible. And if and again, I'm I'm kind of hypothesizing, but if that data sort of remains in an unstructured format on premise in a more traditional file share, is that is that out of the scope of what? Well, the, uh, yeah. So are we are we are we talking about Copilot uh, M365? Are we talking about Copilot Studio. Uh, so, I'm... OK, so so I'll keep it general not to get to the specifics. So with Copilot Studio, for example, if you are building a, a Copilot for specific niches, you could train it on a subset of documents that you add to it. Uh, it doesn't matter what these documents mm -hmm. are, which is fine. But really, for you to take full advantage of it, it needs to be within the a structure uh, on the applications that M365 supports, ideally SharePoint or OneDrive, MS Teams, with the compliance on an M365 level, level your permissions to get the best performance and, and data retrieval from it. There we go. Thumbs up. Christian answered. Thanks, you have. Not um, a problem. Any more? I think we've got we've got a few minutes left. So yeah, if there's any other kind of questions, um, yeah, please feel free to raise them. Um, if you wanted to kind of go into some further detail, uh, uh, feel free to raise it with your um, Transparency account manager. Um, if you are new to Transparency, um, feel free to raise. And uh, um, oh, there we go. We've got uh, we, we we've got a poll that can track that. So um, yeah, if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to have a follow up conversation, please. Um, Please use the voting now, and um, yeah, we can get uh, we can get you in touch with the right person. We've got one more question whilst the uh, whilst voting ensues. Uh, we pretty much dumped all of our data into SharePoint using Fast Track, uh, replicating existing folders like for like. It's going to be a huge task that nobody is looking forward to uh, to organise uh, this in uh, in preparation for Copilot. Where do you suggest you start? Okay, I, th I think this is the kind of question where we need to have a conversation. Um, there are two aspects into this. One is, which goes back to the slides that I've talked about earlier, is the business conversation to understand your processes, how you need to manage your data versus what we have, what you have currently. Then we would run a discovery on the data you have, analyze that with you, and propose a blueprint of an architecture that's scalable and meets what you need and can utilize uh, Copilot. Uh, again, you don't need to go with a big bank. You could build a smaller proof of concept based on the architecture that you would need. Test that out, utilize it with Copilot exclusively that a new setup, see that how, how that works, and then plan uh, migration process from old to new uh, within your tenant. Thanks, Ihab. That, yeah, that was, uh, that's, not, that's not the only one. Um, uh, Daryl, you've got your hand up. Feel free to um, ask away. Yeah, it's one, it's one I thought would be easy if I speak. Um, so just Microsoft products where like OneDrive and stuff, when uh, we are talking about metadata earlier and how um, AI can tag things or not tag things, when you use OneDrive and you have a load of photos um, recently, over recent years, it seems to automatically decide what photographs are for you. And I, I guess quite a lot of us are hoping the dream that um, Copilot can just look at our files and work out roughly what they are because uh, okay. no one's got the time in an organization to go through um as was said in the chat a lot of people have just taken everything from file server yeah. ours is file server older sharepoint sharepoint 2003 and something 2013 it's just a yeah just a mess of files and in, within our company i think a lot of the problem was um just decisions and people deciding on what the meta data should be. Yeah. So it was something that always held us back. So people okay. continue to use SharePoint as a, just a make a folder and fill it up with files they think are, are relevant, which uh, is always pushing against what met the idea of metadata that a file can be many things to many different folders to relevant to different people. So I guess we're all hoping the dream that Copilot can 
come in and magically do all our admin for us. <laughs> so. Well, well, it can help you with certain things. So, uh, in the SharePoint Premium, for example, um, through the Syntex technology, they have something which is based on Azure AI. It's referenced to as object detection. So, what that can do, it looks up at an image. There is a car. It's sunny. It's raining. It's London, it's Paris, etc. And it's going to ch generate the tags for you and tag it with the file. However, that will not replace what you need to do as a user because it depends on your needs. So if you only need to have digital repository of images that you need to use for your slides, for your posters, etc., and that kind of tagging would be helpful for you, perfect. It does the job. But if you have campaign based images so actually i'm working with one of our clients who have exactly that is i talked about the object detection of that picture but that picture could relate to a specific event that you've done it could relate into a specific activity that it relates to and again depends on what the data comes tagged with what information like metadata on the file itself and uh, you would need to add some narrative but there are things that can be automated through ai and there are some things you need to own as the user it's pretty easy for it to do it when it's a picture with a car and you know what i mean a sunshine or and and yeah. that kind of stuff but um obviously different with files but um i guess if it can read and be intelligent enough for the files it can work out roughly what they are it's just the the you yeah, know the time involved um we never have enough spare admins to then say yeah. Yeah, re go through all this and organize and tag it all with metadata. It's been a, something we've wanted to do for the last ten years or so, but it's just never, it's never surfaced. I don't don't know if it ever will, unless AI can do it for us. But yeah, we're still going to have to um, point it completely in the right direction and and know. Um, yeah, we're going to have to teach it, aren't we? That's really what it comes down to. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the whole concept of AI and, and machine learning starts with the training and coaching until, you know, the quality product that we have now. So it was a trained step by step. Oh, well, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. OK. All right. Really helpful. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. We're I think we're at time. Um, there's no more questions. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you ever so much for joining. Ehab, thank you very much for uh, imparting your knowledge and taking us through it. And um, yeah, I can see we've got some votes there. Uh, we'll hang around for a, for a few more minutes. So if you do have some kind of questions that you'd kind of like to ask one-to-one, -one, um, feel free. Um, but if not, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>